All right, hey guys, welcome to the live stream for Reentry and Orbital Simulator. This is a realistic uh, space flight simulator, uh, really focusing on the space race between the United States and the Soviet Union, approximately from 1961 to 1969, as far as the current in-game time frame. Uh, this game was actually developed by, let me make sure I get the name right here, uh, Wilhelmsen Studios, and I hope I'm pronouncing that properly, which is an independent de developer, excuse me, can't talk right now, out of Oslo, Norway. So for this uh, stream, right, haven't played this before on this channel, uh, had some uh, guys who I know asked me about it the other day, so I figured I'd go ahead and do this video to uh, really give any of those who are interested in reentry an idea of what the experience is like. For this one, we're going to be uh, doing Project Mercury right here, approximately from 58 to 62, first U.S. space program, good stuff. And we're going to be using the Mercury Redstone launch vehicle. Now, the Redstone rocket was developed from the uh, Redstone missile that was uh, basically created by the Redstone arsenal, as the name suggests. It is actually, uh, the original designation was the Papa Golf Mike 11, uh, which is actually a short-range ballistic missile. The Redstone launch vehicle, or the Mercury Redstone launch vehicle to be more precise, is a variation of that designed to carry a manned capsule into space. The Mercury Redstone program had six total launches. Three of them were unmanned. One had a chimpanzee, and the final two had... Uh, Shepard, who was the first American in space on the 5th of May, 1961. And that was followed by uh, astronaut Grissom on the 21st of July, also in 1961. There were some plans originally to continue the Mercury Redstone program as a sort of way for astronauts to get practical experience uh, moving into a suborbital prior to doing a full orbit. But, uh, excuse me, but ultimately that program was canceled and they focused on the Mercury Atlas uh, to remain competitive with the Soviet Union. So with all that being said, we're going to move into a free mission, Mercury Redstone, starting at T-90, so we can go through all five checklists for prepping the capsule for launch, then uh, doing the actual mission itself, which according to the flight plan should take approximately 15 minutes and 22 seconds from launch to landing safely back on Earth. All right, let's get started. And go ahead and launch. So for those of you who want to follow along with the flight plan, if you check the description, I've got a link to the uh, flight manuals published by Reentry on their official website. Uh, if you open up the Mercury flight manual and move to page 10 of that, you'll see the actual flight plan itself. I'll go over some highlights in a moment after I get the cockpit itself prepped. So we're going to start, it's cold, it's dark, it's scary, etc. And the Mercury capsule is one of the more simple ones. We'll start by getting some light in here. Press F to turn on your flashlight. Go over here to cabin lights, turn both on. Much better. Okay, now that we can actually see things, it looks very intimidating. It really isn't after you kind of learn how this thing works. Uh, the Academy scenarios are excellent in teaching you. You've got the flight manual and... Most importantly, you've got these good old checklists to follow. We'll start with the interior inspection. With checklists, there are two methods. One is you can manually go through it and read. The other one is you can click run, and it'll point to the specific components that you need to actuate. I'm going to just go through and read them, uh, since I've got a pretty good idea of where everything is. So to start with, we'll turn on the electrical power. Main one. Main two. Main three. Following that, standby one, standby two, and then the isolated battery. All of those are on, okay. We've got power in the capsule itself. Over here, we're gonna turn all of these fuses into the number one fuse position. Now, I don't really mean for this to be a tutorial video, but um, for those who are not familiar with this capsule, I kind of have to explain this to some extent so you have an idea of what I'm talking about. So over here, right, all of the systems in the Mercury capsule 
are related, or excuse me, are controlled by, of course, fuses. Uh, the reason for this is so you can turn certain key systems off until just before they need to fire. You'll see that with the uh, retrograde jettison uh, as we descend into suborbit. As for now, we're going to turn all of these fuses on. So we'll begin the click fest. It is left clicking on every single one of these to make sure that they are activated in the first fuse position. All right, everything's good there. Next, we're going to arm the squib. Arm the auto retro jettison. Cool. We're going to make sure our ASCS is on normal. Yep. Uh, make sure that the RSCS is on auto. Gyros are normal. Yep. Uh, from here, manual fuel handle pushed in, followed by roll, yaw, and pitch. Looks good. Okay, retro delay switch instantaneous. Photo light switch is on. TOM LO freak on. And we're going to make sure that rescue is also on auto. Okay, cool. Check to see if the launch control is turned off, which it is. So before we launch at approximately T minus 10, we're going to set this to ready to tell mission control that we are ready and prepared to conduct a launch. Uh, we're going to go down here, make sure that all of our pull tabs are pushed in. All of our covers are on these buttons, which they are. And everything is set to auto, which it is. So this area here is the sequencer. I'll go into a bit more detail once we get to the clock checks itself. All right, going through here, snorkel, yep. Okay, all right, we're gonna check our fuel. Automatic and manual are both at 100%, that's good. Rate of descent, zero. Altimeter, showing zero. All right, satellite clock. Currently, the time of day, we have 12.33 p.m. I see it is 12.33 p.m. Let's wait for it to transfer to 34 and confirm. All right, everything is working properly there. Okay, so time for launch is zero. Time to retrograde, four minutes and 45 seconds once we're in uh, the suborbital pattern, which is great. Okay, hey, so for sequencers as well as the clock, right? So for this early spacecraft, all of the various sequences that need to be conducted from takeoff to uh, retro to re-entry itself, right, is controlled basically by a sequencer, which is the computer programmed in with specific times for the mission parameters. How this is done is as soon as you launch, the launch clock will begin. You'll start seeing it tick up in sequence. If that doesn't occur, basically I'm gonna remove the guard later on the checklist for the time zero, but you'll press that button in the event it fails so that you're able to uh, basically make sure that the sequencer has some sort of clock to go off of. All right, we'll move to attitude rates and indicators. Rate indicators and attitude indicators, all correct. We're gonna remove the time cover as spoken before. All right check cabin pressure cabin pressure is at 15 we'll see it drop to about 5.5 once we're in a suborbital all right cabin air temperature uh i think we're roasting at this point suit environment also roasting in our suit right now uh okay oxygen primary and emergency or excuse me secondary both are at 100 percent. that's good we're gonna now make sure our suit fan is on normal cabin fan is on normal dc volts is set to main it's right there which is correct ascs ac bus normal yep isolated battery standby standby battery on inlet valve power switch is locked in the normal position audio bus switch normal yep we're gonna set this to 150 volts continue down here all right Box power is on off. UHF, DHF, normal, check. Uh, we're gonna switch UHF to high power. Beacon switch is on ground control, yep. And transmit is set to off. All audio tones. So basically over here, you've got your specific warnings if certain events occur, cabin pressure, O2 emergency, etc. We're gonna turn all those tones on. Some of them, for example, the retro warn is pretty normal. For that to activate telling you hey you're about to retrograde 
you can turn it off by just flipping that switch back over so you're not having to listen to it beep excessively. All right, warning lights are on bright. Yep. All switch fuses in the number one position. Make sure these are activated. Emergency O2 switch is in the normal position. Yes. Uh, all right, temperature selector. We're going to turn that to mark for our suit, our cabin, as well as our inverter. And we're going to spin up the gyros. This will take about five minutes for them to warm up. And that's with the maneuver switch here. Okay, we've got the cabin initially prepared. Uh, next is going to be our abort capabilities test at T minus 40. We'll skip ahead to that using time compression. Um, before that, though, for the launch itself, um, going over the flight plan, we're going to be taking off, obviously, in T minus uh, 1 hour 22 minutes, approximately. Key events that are going to occur, tower separation is going to occur at 2.22, and the launch vehicle will begin separation at 2.32. We'll move into a position where we are in a proper retrograde attitude and we'll have manual control at three minutes and 10 seconds. Now, during our mission, some things that I wanna do is I wanna specifically test out the pitch attitude adjustment while making sure that yaw and roll remain automatically controlled by the computer. So we'll do that. We'll try to focus our periscope here on the separation vehicle, which is the Mercury uh, rocket itself as it falls back to Earth. And while we're doing that, we're gonna go ahead and take some blood pressure samples and send them back to the flight surgeon during that entire time so he can get an idea of how our blood pressure is while operating in space and doing some complex tasks in limited time. I say limited time because we assume manual control at 310, and at 4 minutes and 44 seconds, the retrofire sequence initiates, meaning we have about a minute and 30 seconds to do all of those things as mentioned. Following that, retrofire will occur at 5.14, and after that, we'll begin sending back to the Earth itself. Okay, I'm going to speed this up, and we'll get to T-40 and conduct an abort capabilities check. i going to slow this down a little bit so I don't overshoot the mark. Okay. So, abort capabilities. With the capsule and taking off from our launch pad here, in the event that there's any issue, ground control needs to be able to tell us that uh, we need to abort. What will happen is this light will light up and illuminate in a uh, basically bright orange or red, depending on our brightness settings for our warning lights. And at that point, we'll have to press Control, Shift, and Z in order to abort successfully. I don't anticipate that happening, but I did turn on random failures. So every five minutes of space flight, there's about a 1% chance that something on this capsule will fail. We'll have to push through it and uh, see how it works. Okay, let's go ahead and go down here. Ammeter switch to normal. We're going to turn the squib switch to armed which it currently is, that's good. Okay, we're going to set the DC selector to isolate. And we're going to request an abort capabilities test. Now, as soon as this is done, uh, we're going to see basically uh, some changes in the electrical system as well as the abort light turning on. This happens really quick. In fact, as soon as you press the uh, request abort test, it starts. And I'll go ahead and do that. All right, light is on. Notice some changes in the electrical system there, and we're good to go. All right, next checks are at T minus twenty. Uh, yeah, T minus twenty. The abbreviated interior check. We'll go ahead and speed up to that part. Shoot, kind of fat fingered that there. Uh, we've got enough time, so we'll be fine. Okay, we'll go through this. Make sure that. All of our fuses are set to fuse number one. We did this earlier, but it's better to check and just make sure. You want to be finding out in mid-flight that that's a problem. Squib switch is on, set to arm. Auto retro jettison, armed, yep. Got normal, auto. Uh, regulator handle is in, yes. Okay, switches are on. 
All right, our big one here is retro delay switch. We're going to change that from instantaneous to normal. Rescue switch remains on auto. Okay. Make sure that all these switches are correct, which they are. All right, I'm going to check the fuel out again. Still at 100 and 100. Cabin pressure indicator still at 15. Uh, cabin temperature indicator, all right, we're at about 90 degrees, so significantly better. Although we are still roasting inside of our suit. It's not great. Uh, oxygen primary and secondary still at 100%. Suit fan switch is normal. Cabin fan is on normal. DC volts, I'm turn that back to main. Battery is on normal. Standby is on. Isolated is on standby. Inlet valve power switch. Yep, locked in normal. Audio bus switch on normal. Fans AC bus switch. Normal. It's good. Okay, box power still on off. UHF is on normal. We're going to make sure we're on high power. Transmit switch is on off still. And beacon switch is now going to be set to continuous. Make sure that all fuses on the right side are set and we've got the emergency O2 handle pushed in. Okay, cool. Next two pre-flight checks are gonna be the full internal power followed by the final checks. That'll be in about four minutes. I'll speed up to that point. Okay, full internal power. This is pretty simple. We're going to switch to internal power. Notice the change in the amps we have. We're going to set our isolated battery to normal, our standby battery to off. And we now have internal power. Move on to the final checks. Okay, we're gonna to signal to mission control that we are ready to launch. Make sure that our temperatures are all put in the marked position. We're going to transmit on UHF and we're gonna do a radio check. Good to go. Make sure that the time zero cover is removed. DC volts, we're gonna set that to one. Squib is armed, auto retro jettison is armed. Okay, awesome. At this point, all we gotta do is wait for the launch and we're going to uh, execute our scent checklist. And we'll get this to about 15 seconds for maximum suspense. There we go. Now we're going to wait for everything to boost up in the countdown. Umbilical has disconnected. The clock has automatically started. We'll let mission control know. At this point, we should be seeing our tower separation at 2 minutes and 22 seconds. So in the meantime, just enjoy the ride. We can go to the external view, check it out as we take off. There we go, real cinematic and stuff. Okay, cool. Enough messing around. During this time, check-in cabin pressure should fall to 5.5. Cabin temperature, getting a little warm, but it's fine. We're still baking in our suit. Sure, it's great. Uh, checking out our altitude, steadily rising, steadily ascending. Attitude is looking to be within parameters. Cabin pressure is cabin moving pressure to 5.5. 5. 5. Okay. And 124 will be the stabilization of the cabin pressure. Looks like the flight plan is pretty much on as of this point.
should be seeing the tower jettison occurring in 2 minutes and 22 seconds. Once that's done, we're going to turn off the auto retro jettison as well as the fuse for it. Bottom line, the retro uh, booster is how we're going to make it back to Earth. And if there's any short or any error in the electrical system, the last thing that we want is that thing jettisoning and leaving us trapped in space. Okay. And tower jettison has initiated. Tower has successfully jettisoned. Jettison and auto retro jettison are off. Move to Bico checklist. Separation capsule is good. And we're going to turn off the emergency retro jettison there. At this point. Seco separation capsule is green, and we are automatically moving into position. The periscope here, we can use the magnifier, zoom in a little bit closer. What I want to try to do is focus in on our launch vehicle there. So we're going to move to auxiliary on, pull out manual, pull out pitch, we're going to start our blood pressure test. We're going to confirm roll is inoperable. Y'all is inoperable. Pitch is operable. Keep in mind our time to retro. And we're going to try to center up exactly with our launch vehicle. There we go. We are balanced, focusing in on the launch vehicle itself. All right, good stuff. We're going to stop our blood pressure test. We're going to move back into our normal orientation and prepare for the retro sequence to fire. Zoom out to see the entirety of the Earth. Pretty beautiful sight, um, especially since this would be one of those first times that, that had ever been seen uh, to this extent. Also look out the window, enjoy some of the new cloud textures they added. Alright, retrograde is occurring in 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. We're going to turn up our cooling because this is going to get really hot. We're waiting for the retro warm light to go off. will be right there. You'll hear it. I'm going to turn that off because that beeping is really annoying. All right, retro sequence green. Retro attitude green. Waiting for firing of retro to turn green. Retro is firing. Systems are looking good. Pull down the cabin to 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Pressure is holding at 5.5. No issues with attitude. All right. Retro will jettison in 60 seconds. Emergency retro on. Retro jettison primary switch is on. We'll wait for it to fire, then switch to re-entry attitude and ensure that our attitude is adjusting as specified. Waiting for retro to jettison. Should occur at now. All right, retro has jettisoned. Switching to re-entry attitude. All 
All right, we're going to conduct an HF radio check. And red on HF. Switch to UHF, radio check. Acknowledged. Okay, at this point, point zero five G has activated. Capsule has detected the atmosphere, and we are moving into a roll. Zoom out so you guys can kind of see that. And there we are, rolling around. Uh, my understanding is this to is to attempt to dissipate heat from just hitting one part of the capsule and helping make sure that we actually survive and don't, well, you know, cope to death in here. And we are currently re-entering the atmosphere. Monitor our cabin temperature. It's increasing, but fortunately we cooled it down before this occurred. So it's looking like we are doing okay. And we have entered into the Earth's atmosphere proper and are dropping. Okay. All right, that has completed. At this point, we're going to make sure that our drogue chute deploys at approximately uh, about 23,000 feet. Now the drogue is a smaller parachute. It's designed to just slow the capsule down so that when the main deploys, it doesn't rip it to shreds and then we fall plunging at full speed into the ocean and die a horrible death. That would be very tragic at this point. And we're gonna look for the deployment and listen for the deployment of the drogue, which should occur momentarily. And Drogue has deployed. Snorkel has deployed. We'll turn that off. Set this to emergency mode so that we're feeding in oxygen from the outside into the cabin. Landing bag switch is on auto. We're going to check that the main chute deploys. That'll be at 10,000 feet. and main chute has deployed. We're going to switch to RT on UHF DR. Landing bag sounds like it has deployed. Once that's complete, ASCS bus to off, photo light switch to off. All right, and at this point, we have done everything that we can possibly do. We're just gonna enjoy the trip down to the surface itself and landing in the ocean proper. We go up here and go to this kind of weird view and kind of see it. Um, a little bit of graphical glitches there, but that's okay. Still early access. And honestly, considering this is an independent developer, it's been pretty amazing uh, what they've been able to accomplish with this experience. Go to the external view and uh, you'll see like the drogue shoot kind of fly off. That's based on, I spoke to the developer about it. That's actually based on uh, kind of an issue with the engine right now where uh, if you don't physically see something, they don't really render it, and that's to try to save resources. So when we switch to the external view, there goes the drogue chute flying off uh, to do great things. Goodbye, little guy. But here we are. Main is deployed. Landing bag is deployed. And we are ready to land. Getting a little artifacts here and there, but I don't know. They just be my graphic settings. And I guess for, you know, the super cinematic shot, like in the thumbnail, that's getting to a better position. You know, something like that, I guess. Except their one is a lot better. It's fine. I like it. Okay, now we'll just wait to land. And uh, from there, activate our rescue beacon. And that will be the mission successfully accomplished. Hey, so honestly though, if you guys are into um, 
really the space race between uh, the U.S. and the Soviets, and you're not looking for something where you're really in a management and uh, designer role, such as Kerbal Space Program, and you're looking more just to basically fly equipment on historical style missions. Reentry is an absolute great purchase. I think it's available now for 25% off on Steam until I think like the 8th of July. Uh, yeah, 8th of July. Uh, honestly, like I would strongly consider it. I've made you know, this is definitely a purchase that I do not regret in any way, shape, or form. And we're going to prepare to hit the ground, or the ocean, I guess, which we've done. Uh, okay, the proper position. Rescue's activated. We'll turn it to manual so that we will be picked up by ship. And hey, that's the mission. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, Hope that, you know, if any of you guys are kind of interested in early space flight and the space program, this is a game that you check out, try out, and have some fun with. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and end the session and end the stream. Thanks for watching. Uh, see you guys at a later date. Sigh. <sighs>